Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. I don't know why I said it like that, that was a really weird voice and I apologize, but here we are. Today, I thought we could do something, I always say this, we could do something a little bit different. We're gonna revamp this old book that I found basically in like a charity shop. So I paid a few pounds for charity to get this book, super second hand, super loved. But as you can see, maybe you can't see, it's super scuffed. Um, the cover is like a little bent, the pages are, you know when it's like pulling up here. The spine is super broken, super. And there's loads of mildew all over the book. For ages, I wanted to try my hand at kind of rescuing a book instead of just painting over the cover. I am gonna be painting over this cover, so disclaimer, all those people who are gonna be like, oh my God, I love books so much. They're like my soul. Shut up, get lost. I'm sick of being nice to y'all. <laughs> We're gonna paint on this book because it's super old and it was gonna go in the bin otherwise, okay? Right, we're over that now. Um, I really like this book. I read it a long time ago and uh, yeah, let's get into it. I wanted to try um, getting rid of all the mildew. So we're gonna try that and we're gonna try and reshape the book somehow. I'm not sure how, but we're gonna try it. So stay along for the journey or leave. Lich. Just leave if it annoys you. Just go. No one's stopping you. Yeah, I've got a lot of sass today. Whatever. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the voiceover. I don't know why I said it like that, but buckle down because we're gonna chill and we're gonna watch some painting. And this is gonna be a huge contrast to the uh, the angry vibes at the start of the video, which made me laugh a little bit, but also probably made people a little bit mad. So we're just gonna chill now. Um, I wanna start by speaking about the book and let people know that I did read this a probably about five years ago so that's a long time and the way that my brain works is that it just filters out stuff that I've consumed like if I've watched a show and I'll go and speak to some friends about the show like maybe a month later they'll be like and this bit happened and I'll be like I don't remember that <laughs> so that's basically how my brain works so you can imagine what it's like with this book which is kind of like a long book um, five years later I do remember like the base of it but yeah so I'm just gonna read the synopsis for you guys and probably give myself a little reminder too. So this is Shadow of the Wind, Barcelona 1945, a city slowly heals from its wall wall root I didn't I had to check if I was recording there a city slowly heals from its war wounds and Daniel an antiquarian book dealer woo that's a mouthful an antiquarian an antiquarian book dealer's son who mourns the loss of his mother finds solace in a mysterious book entitled The Shadow of the Wind. But then he sets out to find the other author's other works. He makes a shocking discovery that someone has been systematically destroying every copy of every book the author has written. In fact, Daniel May had the last book in existence. Soon, Daniel's seemingly innocent quest opens the door into one of the Barcelona's darkest secrets, an epic story of murder, madness, and doomed love. Boom, boom, boom. So it's kind of like a gothic piece, I would say, because in the book, it really feels like the way the author describes scenes as if you're there. I visited Barcelona, but obviously I was never there in, the in 1945, unless you think I'm really, really old, um, which you might. But it's, it was a really 
good book. I remember really loving the book and wanting to read the second one, but putting it off because they were quite long. And I was in fact just like, oh, I want to read something shorter first. And I think the problem with me is that, like I said, I have the memory of a gnat. So when I need to go and read the next book in a series, I kind of need to remember what happened in the first one. So I probably will need to reread this book if I want to read the second one. Unfortunately, I believe that the author recently died, but I know that he did finish the series. But it's such a shame, like, because he was an epically good writer. Like, the mood and feel that he created in the books was always so brilliant. So let's talk about the book painting a little bit. I went in with some block shapes basically, I just wanted to block out what I wanted to paint. I found an image of Barcelona, um, a street, and I wanted to kind of make it look like it was in the 1940s rather than recently. So I wanted to edit out stuff within my like um, imagery that I found for inspiration and I just wanted to block out shapes and have a very kind of abstracty feel to it but not too abstract I just wanted to hint at things and I feel like this really has a sort of Spanish look and feel to it I can't really explain why I think I just get that vibe from it when I look at the final piece and I'm really actually happy with the way that this one turned out when I first started it I was like this is gonna be bad and I'm not gonna show anyone because it's gonna be unfortunate that I painted over an actual book. Can I just say that this is the first book that I painted over that is not a movie cover book as well so it felt a little bit like a sensitive issue but I was reassuring myself knowing that this book was literally covered in mildew which I think I managed to get rid of a little bit and uh, yeah I think I think it made me feel better and then in the end I really am pleased with the painting so I'm really happy I think I might I think I might get a box frame and frame it anyway the point is I was blocking out shape so what I was doing I was looking at my reference photo and I was like squinting to see the darks and lights of the image and then just blocking out those dark and contrasted colors which really help to define where the lines will go next and help to find the overall piece and give a little bit of context to it as well so as i was going i was just basically adding little areas details but in really rough form and i really wanted that to be like the energy of the cover i didn't want too much detail i just wanted it to be a little bit more organic kind of like reflecting the architecture of Barcelona a little bit where everything is sort of Gaudi-esque and uh, I'm not sure if Gaudi was actually alive then but you know the whole city has that vibe of just like existing I don't know if you've ever been or if you have the chance to go I would go to Barcelona because I've been a couple times because obviously I live well not close to Barcelona but it's a plane ride away from me, like a short plane ride. So yeah, it's a really beautiful city and I wanted to capture that sort of spooky gothic feel that the book has as well. So I chose these sort of neutrally dark colours with a little pop of light here and there to like kind of give the city that energy that it has and that vibe of like excitement that portrayals, portrayals? permits through the book so yeah this was what i came up with and i hope that you guys like it and i hope that you don't mind too much that it's not a movie cover book and like i said if you do mind just just leave me alone <laughs> i'm so tired of online bullying i'm tired of it yeah and uh, i'm bored of it too so i'm not taking it um so this was the overall look i think i've probably said everything I need to say. Oh, to get rid of the mildew, which I realised I didn't actually say how I did that, is I just used like a nail file. They say to use sandpaper, but unfortunately I didn't have any. So I just nail filed it off, which is the same sandpaper really. And uh, yeah, it seemed to have worked. I added a bit of bicarbonate of soda to the pages to soak up any mildew or any sort of 
water, I guess? Throughout the book, water? What do I mean? Moistness? Ugh. Nope. Not saying that word. Any mildew throughout the book, and I hope that that worked. I couldn't really fix the spine. I mean, I'm not a book expert, um, but I did try to bend it a certain way and keep it in like a little um, harnessy thing that I found, and that seemed to help the book a little bit. But yeah, I think that this book was going to go in the bin, and now it's received a lot of love and affection from me, and overall a really, I think, a nice painting, which I'm pretty proud of. I'm taking off the tape and everything but then adding a few more details to the book that I decided I want a bit more of that light coming through and a little bit more whimsy to it so the light is kind of like floating through the air but yeah that's the final look and feel of the book and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me try to give a bit of revival to this book obviously I am no expert but I really do like the way that it turned out in the end and I hope you guys did too. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and comment and all that lovely algorithm-y stuff that um, really helps. But also thank you to my patrons and if you guys want to check out my Patreon, it's down below. Thanks again for watching guys and I hopefully see you next time. Bye!